Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your girl Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So if there's something you want us to react to, let us know by dropping a link in the comment section below, and we'll do it for you. We, you can check out our second YouTube channel called Funny and Jesse 2.0. We post weekly content. You guys can hit the subscribe and enjoy the content that we're putting out. We've got a podcast called Diving In with Funny and Jesse. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, um, this channel, or the second YouTube channel for the visual. We also have a Patreon account, which you can find the link somewhere in the description box. And yeah, I hope you guys are doing all right and may you stay blessed. So today I'm going to be reacting to From Metalhead to Muslim. To Muslim convert, con convert, American convert story. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, guys. My name is Joshua, Joshua Angel, and uh, I need to get right into the most pressing matter that I know is on your mind, bro. Ak, how long did it take you to grow that beard? Well, guys, honestly, I have no idea because I've been growing it since the age of 16. <laughs> I'm 30 now, so I have no idea. Secondly, guys, I want to say thank you to Muslim Convert Stories for allowing me to share my story on your platform. Bidni Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the permission of Allah, you guys are going to get tremendous value from my video. Inshallah, I'm going to share with you the three top reasons why I chose to accept Islam. Inshallah. Well, alhamdulillah for that. Without further ado, let's get into it. All right, guys, let's get right into it, inshallah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alamin Hamdan Kathiran Tabu Mubarakan Fi Wa Shadu An La Ilaha Illallah Wa Hadu La Sharika La Wa Shadu An Muhammadan Abduhu Rasulu Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wa Sabi Wa Sallam Wa Tasliman Kathira Woo! Let's get right into it, man. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of backstory about who I was prior to being a Muslim. I was raised as a heavy metal, long hair, don't care, bird fingers to the any type of authority type of kid, man. That's how I was raised. That's how I was raised by my mom and my stepdad. And um, at the age of 15 years old, I wanted to be a rock star, man. I wanted to be the greatest heavy metal musician and uh, guitar player that I ever walked the face of the earth. And I mean that with no exaggeration. Uh, I got my first guitar when I was 15. You could not tell me the color of my wall because I had pictures of every single musician from a guitar player, drummer, vocalist, bass player, you name it, every type of band. You know, just plastered all over my wall, man, like most kids do. And, uh, you know, I was no different. And so when I was 15 years old, I looked up at those pictures. Some of my favorite bands were Pantera, Lamb of God, Alice in Chains, Gojira, you know, I mean, Metallica, obviously, Megadeth, and, you know, the list just goes on and on and on and on. And, uh, you know, I'd look up at those, at those pictures, man, and I would draw inspiration from them, and I'd be like, man, you know, I want to be just like them. You know, Steve Ray Vaughan and Randy Rhodes and all those uh, all those musicians and so from the time I was 15 years old to the time I was 22 I dedicated every single free moment that I had to that dream <laughs> I mean I literally would wake up I'd fall asleep and wake up with my guitar in my hand my amps still on I just you know get out of bed ah, what time is it three o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> crank the amp to 11 and start wailing right so SubhanAllah. And that's what I did, man, for, you know, seven years of my life. And then uh, I, I met a Muslim. I met a Muslim, and uh, at first, you know, I was, totally, I was totally against religion, man, for me personally. Not for other people, but for me, man, I would say I would probably consider myself an agnostic at the time. I would say I was an atheist, but deep down, man, I was an agnostic, and it was just more so because the only God that I knew was the one that the Christians said they believed in, and I just seen a lot of hypocrisy from my personal. I'm not talking about every church. I'm talking about the churches that I went to. I seen a lot of hypocrisy in a man, and I was like, man, if that's if that's the best that God, you know, that's God's people, man. I don't want nothing to do with it. And so, uh, I met a Muslim, and it was the first time that a religious person actually didn't judge me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, again, I had long hair. I had a little bit of a beard, not like this, but I had a little something, something, and uh, you know, band shirts, and I was a metal musician. Every other word in my mouth was the f bomb. <laughs> I mean, you know, drinking, all the all the things that go on with that lifestyle, right? 
and uh, you know that person didn't judge me and uh, it was very it was something I really hadn't experienced all that much in addition to that I would alhamdulillah Allah always blessed me to be a curious individual so I would always you know I'd study Ku Klux Klan or I'd study this group or that group and so I was always curious of how other people live their lives because especially people that had a completely different mentality, ideologies, belief systems, morals, ethics that are completely opposite to what I personally have, those are the people that I'd find the most interesting. And that's why I would, you know, study people like that and groups like that. And so she was no different. It was a Muslim sister. Um, we worked together. And because again i you know i said i'm a very curious person i'd wake up in the morning and i'd turn on slayer or i'd crank you whatever some type of tunes and she'd wake up and she'd pray fedger i'm like man you know and she's praying five times a day she's staying away from you know all these types of you know haram things that i know about now and i was like man this is just very interesting so as time moved on as time uh went, went about you know, I started learning more about the religion and I want to share with you three things, three main points that led me to believe that Islam is the truth. Uh, the very first one, the most apparent one, the most obvious one is that Tawheed is the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that I, it was the first time that I, that I witnessed a religion that it deterred every path, every, every way, every... <clears throat> Any type, of, any type of way that someone could worship other than God, other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it negated it, it prevented it, it put a barrier in front of it, behind it, on each side, it just, it, it barricaded you into where you only had one path to take, and that was to your creator, the heavens, the, the creator of the heavens and the earth, Allah Azza wa Jal, the mighty and the majestic. You know, Christianity would lead you to this man. Other religions would lead you to this men, or these men, or this, these gods. And as Allah tells us in the Quran, He said if there were multiple gods, they would bicker and fight amongst one another and <clears throat> over, over power, over what would take place in the universe. And this is just common sense, man. One would always try to overpower the other, right? That's what logic and common sense and aql and the natural fitra, uh, the natural inclination that Allah has created us on. So that was point number one, was that... I was like, subhanAllah, dude, this is the first religion that you, it literally <laughs> prevents you from worshiping anyone other than your creator. Of course, I never believed in, you know, seeking forgiveness from a man. That was just my personal, uh, personal belief. I'm like, this dude might be more sinful than me. Or what if he's on vacation? What if he's sick? What if he calls out? What if he dies? You know what I'm saying? What happened? There's all these different... Man, I'm in a bind. I'm in a jam. I need to get forgiven. What am I supposed to do? You know what I'm saying? So, I, I never really bought that. So, alhamdulillah, point number one is at Tawheed. Point number two is how just Islam is. And what I mean by that is I, was, I would be reading uh, different you know, uh, books or pamphlets or things that, that Muslim sister, may Allah reward her, what she would give to me or even just books that she would bring to work because you know we we'd be working 12 hour shifts so you know saying on her break you know she'd have some books and I'd be curious to be like man you know can I t can I take a look at that and how just Islam is that just because you say you're a Muslim just because you say ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu muhammadan rasulullah you know and you say that you believe that's not enough right you could still go to hellfire there are Muslims that will go to hell. May Allah protect us from that. But that is the harsh and true reality. And it might sound kind of counterintuitive or kind of like, what? That actually brought you to Islam? That actually convinced you that Islam is the truth? For sure. For sure, man. Because all these other religions, it's just like, all right, man, all you guys say is I believe. And you can basically just go on about your day, go on about your life. You ain't really got to change much. And, uh, you know, all is forgiven. Islam is completely different. Islam says, okay, you say I believe. Now you got to put forth some action, some effort. And even though you can put forth that effort, it's still by the mercy of Allah because we still have shortcomings that we even get granted paradise. But the fact that 
you can say I'm a Muslim and still go to hell, still face al-bab al-qabr, uh, you know, the punishment in the grave or alhamdulillah, the, the blessings in the grave. To me, I was like, I loved how fair and how just that was. And then point number three, point number three is th not only the encouragement, the recommendation, but the commandment to seek knowledge. You know, where I come from, how I was brought up, what I experienced in my own life, you don't ask questions. You don't question those in authority. You don't question the Bible. You don't ask those questions. You just accept it as faith, blind faith, and that's it. Chalas. You know what I'm saying? That's all you got to do. And there was just too many problematic issues that I have with Christianity and you know that I, that's the only way I can speak of I can't speak of with these other religions because I didn't I wasn't raised like that I just had too many issues that I would just get shut down shot down and just told hey man that's just the way things are and you know Islam is alhamdulillah encourages you again commands you you know Allah says if you don't know then ask those who know you are encouraged you're commanded seek knowledge seek beneficial knowledge we're taught, you know, all the virtues of seeking ilm, of seeking knowledge of Islam, of the deen, of, you know, Quran and Hadith, Sunnah, the way of the Sahaba, you know, subhanAllah, I'm sorry guys, it's very hot out here, very humid. <laughs> I just wanted to get you guys some nice scenery. I'm almost done. But yeah, guys, so the encouragement to seek knowledge was that, again, point number three is to why I felt in my heart, Islam is the truth, man. In fact, you know, I, about a week into my accepting of my Islam, I watched a video called, entitled, How the Bible Led Me to Islam by Yusha Evans. I watched that video and subhanAllah, I mean, basically I was like a looney tune, man. My jaw was on the floor. I just couldn't believe what I had heard, man. And, you know, it made so much sense of, of Isa and that just because he didn't have a father, it didn't mean that, you know, he's a son of God, but that just shows the absolute power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he can do whatever he wants to. Kum fai kum, right? Like Adam Adam was born with no father, no mother. Eve was born, right, with no mother. Maryam, uh, uh sorry, not Mary, uh Isa alayhi salam, born with no father, and us born with a father and a mother. So it just showed that full circle, Allah can create you with no man, no woman, no man, no woman, or both a man and a woman. You know, alhamdulillah, that just proves that. And so guys, that's my story. I wanted to keep this brief, concise, and to the point. I didn't want to waste any of you guys' time. I hope that you got in value from this video. I, you know, I appreciate you guys so much. Jazakallah khairan, subhanakal muhamdik, ashadun la ilaha anta, stakfara tubu alay. Jazakallah khairan for your time and your attention. May Allah reward you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Very interesting video. Um, I was drawn to two of his points. The first one being um, belief. It's just, that's why I say some of you say your one thing, but then you don't act on those words. If you believe in something, be if you believe in a religion, then act by what that religion specifies. Don't just say I'm a believer. You're a believer in what if you're doing the opposite of what that say religion says. And another thing was seeking knowledge. Always seek knowledge. Just because we were born in a family that believes this doesn't mean we should limit our knowledge to just that one thing our families believe. Go out there, seek knowledge, find out, read a lot, talk to people be open-minded and you find knowledge somewhere there you find things that you thought you couldn't find otherwise this was very um good and uh, congratulations to you my only i'm happy for people that convert let me know what you guys think about this video and yeah make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video